Greetings everybody, Dr. Frank here with a training video to discuss two uh, protocol changes, uh, specifically protocol 1.4, which is airway management, and protocol 4.6, which is respiratory distress. I'm gonna start with uh, protocol 1.4, airway management, and the change is specifically to the induction agent that we're gonna be using. Uh, remember, induction is when we sedate the patient for RSI, and then we move on to paralysis. So the sedation, um, medication that we're going to be switching to is ketamine. Um, we're unable to get um, Atomidate right now. We do have some that are still on the rescues um, and there's still some Atomidate out there, uh, but it's going to be phased out. So uh, just as a, as a pre-note, if you have Atomidate, please use that over ketamine uh, while we have some, some of it in stock, uh, but eventually we're going to run out of it. So uh, once we run out of Atomidate, uh, we're gonna switch exclusively to ketamine for induction. Uh, the dose is gonna be based on people who are less than 80 kilos um, or over 80 kilos. So you, I mean, you'll be able to read this in, in the protocol, um, but just as a reference, less than 80 kilos, the dose is 150 milligrams IV or IO of ketamine for induction, uh, and over 80 kilograms, 200 milligrams. Um, IV or IO. So just remember, just to keep in the back of your head, the induction dose is typically two milligrams per kilogram. So if you're uh, somebody who's, you know, feels comfortable with a you know, weight-based dose, just remember it's usually two milligrams per kilogram, um, but it's either 150 if, the, if you think they're less than 80 kilos or 200 milligrams if you think they're over, over 80 kilos. Um, you know, obviously it's given before the paralytic, um, you know, just use it just as you would accommodate and just remember how important it is to uh, sedate people after they're intubated so uh, ketamine does last longer than atomidate. Atomidate lasts maybe five or six or seven minutes. Um, but uh, and ketamine, I would say 15, 20 minutes. Um, but uh, just be very, very mindful that th these medicines, that ketamine lasts less time than, uh, than the paralytic. So just make sure you get that, uh, that uh, post-intubation post sedation medicine ready. And uh, moving on to that, that's a good segue to the new change in this protocol for post-intubation sedation. You'll have two options. Um, one is to continue using midazolam as we uh, typically do, two and a half milligrams IV or IO every uh, five minutes. Um, or you can use ketamine, and the dose for ketamine for post-intubation sedation is 100 milligrams IV or IO every 15 minutes. Uh, so, you know, the idea is really to leave it up to you what you, what you would rather use. Um, you know, consider the patient's hemodynamics. If they're hypotensive, uh, you may want to avoid uh, midazolam and, and, and use ketamine. In theory, in theory, it could uh, increase the blood pressure, um, but um, uh, we'll leave it up to you to use either midazolam or ketamine, and you can uh, reference the doses. Uh, but just remember how important it is to, uh, in, uh, to sedate your patients who are intubated. Okay, now moving on to the second protocol change, protocol 4.6. Um, as you remember, um, during COVID, we switched um, the, the protocol to uh, mild, moderate, or severe respiratory distress um, in an effort to decrease our use of um, nebulized medicines or aerosolized medicines. Um, I, feel, I feel comfortable switching back to the pre-COVID um, protocol. Um, there's literature to support the fact that um, COVID isn't aerosolized by these medicines. Um, so uh, there's not too much concern at this point. Um, and we're uh, having a hard time getting tributylene. Um, so we still can get some tributylene uh, and we're still gonna use it, uh, but we're gonna go back to the pre-COVID uh, respiratory distress protocol. The only thing we're changing is that we're adding tributylene into that protocol. So you'll see that uh, for bronchospasm, first you'll start with um, albuterol, you'll move on to tributylene, uh, methylprednisolone, remember the dose now is 40 milligrams, um, and for kids, uh, prednisolone. If they have IV access for children, you can use methylprednisolone, you just refer to the hand heavy app. Um, but just make sure that we're not starting IVs or IOs in kids uh, who don't need um, IV or IO access. So for somebody who has a you know, pretty mild asthma exacerbation, uh, we don't need IV access for that. You can give that kid oral prednisolone. Um, so uh, if we have tributylene, we'll use it. If we don't, we'll treat them without tributylene. But uh, it's basically uh, an all or none type of situation as we're moving away from the mild, moderate to severe respiratory distress 
which gave you know some patients some medicines, other patients not. Uh, we're moving on to an all or none thing, so albuterol, tributylene, uh, corticosteroid uh, for everybody. Um, so that's the that's the big change. Remember, tributylene is not used in children under 12. Um, you can use um, uh, epinephrine for those children, uh, but just reference the protocol. So if there's any questions, please reach out to uh, the training captain or the EMS captains. Um, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you.